uh, how ready are you, and maybe you could talk to the industry, if not, I'll call on others, to flip the switch on that curriculum. If the FAA were to come out today with a rule, we heard it maybe later this fall, if they were to come out with a rule, how quickly could you flip the switch on the curriculum? The trained people, the equipment to support that curriculum and so on. Get that microphone. From a Delta perspective, we're, we're absolutely ready to go. Uh, in our partnerships and having the discussions with all the schools, we're making it very clear that once the curriculum has been updated, uh, we will find ways to be able to assist them in many, many ways we've already been doing. Um, it's too important to the industry to be able to get that modified curriculum, specifically in avionics as well as composites. Uh, we've done some uh, payments out of our foundation at different schools to start building on that today. Uh, we're not gonna wait, uh, but certainly as this progresses, we'll be ready to go. Um, Ms. Adani, could you uh, discuss that uh, question as well from a from an educator's perspective, and I'll go back to Aviation High School on this question as well. How, how quickly could you flip the switch to uh, to an updated curriculum? Well, for Lyft Academy, it's a little different because we're an apprenticeship program. So our entire fleet at Lyft is composite because we're training what Republic Airways needs, which is um, technicians to work on composite aircraft. Um, we are meeting the requirements of Part 147 through you know, uh, different teaching models to teach dope and fabric, but those students, other than learning it in the classroom, they're not really experience, experiencing it. So as far as, you know, how quickly we can adjust to a uh, new curriculum, it can happen overnight at Lyft Academy. Mr. Jackson, could you respond to that question? Sure, and I want to first thank you for having two of us represent the school. Um, so it's a great question, because as a New York City public high school, as I mentioned in my statement, uh, we have a lot of regulations, not just FAA, but New York City and state requirements yeah, to follow, right. so it's definitely a challenge for us. Um, and Mr. Caramaccio oversees the aviation maintenance program, so I'd like him to address that aspect of it. Good morning, thank you. Um, I know we've been speaking quite very clearly today on the modernization of curriculum, and the words composites and avionics come to mind. Um, avionics and composites, when it, as it addresses a 147 school, becomes a difficult challenge. Um, just in budget alone, it would seriously affect our school budget to support such technology. However, we at Aviation High School are working very closely in collaboration with our local FISDO, with Delta Airlines, thank you Delta, and with JetBlue to move in that direction. I have with me here today a project that was designed locally at our school in collaboration with the parties mentioned, where we do just that. Um, we have taken an old design, uh, going back to Mr. Ms. Donati's uh, testimony concerning wooden fabric. This wing bay, and we call this a wing bay, and this is a section of an aircraft wing with, uh, with the associated aileron or flight control, for many years at Aviation High School was constructed out of wood dope and fabric. We have moved to composites where we now have our youngsters incorporate advanced sheet metal and composite technology where we actually do the repairs that our airline partners are so desperately in need of. So um, very quickly, just to wrap this up, can we flip a switch? My answer is no, we cannot. Uh, it will take some time. Um, it will take a collaboration of all parties mentioned. However, it is doable, absolutely. We're proving it, it can be done. Great, thank, yeah. uh, thank you, and uh, Mr. Vivo. Answer the same question. Yeah, similar. Um, it, there's, it's not a flip of a switch. It would take some time. You'd need to give us an opportunity um, to make sure we had budget dedicated, then to work with the FAA to to work through the whole process of the manual update and laboratories. I mean, we we are fortunate as a Hispanic-serving institution to qualify for Title V and Title III grants, and have actually just added a state-of-the-art composites lab. So in some ways, we're ahead of the curve, knowing this was coming, right? But um, it's unclear to us exactly what all the rule changes will look like, so having an opportunity to have time to implement uh, would be helpful. Yeah, um, excellent. Uh, um, sorry. Just a moment. Uh, Mr. Neely, um, can you, Kind of came up at the end of five minutes there. Uh, sorry, I'm out of time. I, I know I'm going to take time. Can you address your veterans program, veterans outreach program? Can I take 
more, di more directly. I'm sorry, actually it's multiple programs that the, um, the first layer, quite frankly, is, is taking advantage of the fact that we have so many veterans in our business and they have colleagues that they worked with in the military, and so there's direct outreach. And that's, that's true at, at, at all, all of the jobs within Gulfstream where, where we recruit veterans. Uh, the, the, um, another example is the, pro the transition support program where I'm sure you're familiar, active members of the military during the last, I think it's six months of their active service can go and work in industry. We're very much involved in that. that we think that's a wonderful program. Two great examples. That's great. Good. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'll recognize uh, Representative Graves of Louisiana for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.